Okay, video number two. Okay, so what we're going to look at is uh, the question in your quiz it was asking you to figure out uh, what happens when a object that is very far away has its uh, image produced uh, going through a meniscus meniscus lens. Now it shouldn't matter what kind of lens. Uh, the only reason uh, that was there was to make sure that you knew what the different types of lenses were. Now you were in luck because I actually told you at the beginning of the quiz that it was one that was both concave and convex. So what we're talking about is a lens that looks like uh, looks like that. Now, you could have done it two ways. You could have said, okay, it's uh, facing this way, and the object's that way. Or, or, or you could have just as easily said, well, wait, no. Um, it's, whoops, whoo, look at me. Don't know what I'm doing. You could have just as easily said that the lens was looking like this. Now, it doesn't matter which way you say. Um, it didn't matter to me. It was your choice. Uh, it will produce a different result depending upon which side you choose. But either way, you can still do it the same way. The same things have to be done. So it didn't matter to me too much what you did. So let's take a look at this for a second and say, okay, I'm just going to get my red light here. Red light. Beautiful. But let's go through the steps of how do I figure this out. So first thing. First thing I have to say, okay, well, well, where is the image? Um, I've got an, uh, I've got the object far away. It's point, it's somewhere really, really far away. It's distant. So um, I think in most, uh, when I was in the quiz, I had said to you guys, well, think about it like it's a star. So if it's a star or anything like that, I'm not going to be able to draw the image. I can't draw it. It's, it's too far away. But what I can do is I can say, okay. Um, I can at least draw the lines. Now, the lines, if they're coming from far away, this is something that I told you in class, is that if I have the light rays coming from a very, very far away object, then all those light rays, once they come here, are all parallel to the principal axis. I can have them all parallel. I don't have... So, for example, if I had a, a light source right here, here's my light bulb, here's my light then I would have a, a ray that would go towards it, uh, my lens like that. But I, but the, another one would go like this at a totally different angle. And this one would go at this angle, and this one would go at this angle. So I'd have a real trouble trying to figure out where do all these light rays go. They'd be all refracting through this lens in different ways. And uh, that's not what I want to talk about. What I'm saying is that far away, I'm going to have light rays that come towards the lens all Parallel, all parallel to the principal axis. So I'm just going to draw them all in. Now, I don't have to go through every single one of these. In fact, um, two is probably more than enough. Notice also, um, if I'm going, I'm going to have one ray that goes right through the principal axis, and uh, that's a very useful one because what that tells me is that that one's just going to go straight through. Why do I know that? I know that one's going straight through because I know that along the principal axis, my uh, normal is actually right in line with the principal axis. My normal is is the principal axis. The principal axis is the normal for any light ray hitting at that point. And if I know that, that means my light ray is entering at an incident angle of zero. This is zero. And one of the rules of refraction is that if my incident angle of zero is zero, my refracted angle is zero, which means this is just going to go straight through. So I actually, look at that, I already drew one light ray. But now, what you want to do here is you want to look at this, and I said it in the question, is that you want to look at this as many different stacked prisms. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, hang on now, I'm just going to go, whoops, I don't want to do that. I'm going to turn that off. 
a stack prism. What I mean is that if I looked at that, um, let me see, and I, and I just started kind of like cutting it up. So I sort of said, okay, I got a piece here, 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 and I'm looking at one on top of the other. There's a bunch of prisms like this, there, and then this one, and then on and on and on, all throughout the whole length of my of my lens and if you remember in class I had said here I'll just show you the slide I showed you is that if I if I looked at oops, let me draw this now if I looked at a lens for example a biconcave I can simplify that into saying okay that's really kind of just um, a bunch of prisms and if I want to simplify it even further, just like I have here, I could just say, well, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simplify so that I make straight, flat surfaces. <clears throat> That's what I'm really trying to do here. That's what I'm trying to do. So I can look at any of these. Uh, let me see. I'm going to look at this one here. If I wanted to simplify this, this is really... Uh, where I've got from here to here, and then this one's here to here. So I'm looking at light entering here. I'll just draw it over here um, at a slight angle like that, more of an angle like that. And the question is, okay, what's going to happen if I look at the light ray as it hits here and then it passes through on this side? What happens? This is exactly what Newton was always playing with. He was always playing with prisms because it was uh, you got some very dramatic uh, changes to angles. So if I'm going to do this, then I have to look at the refraction <coughs> as this light ray hits here and then as it hits here. So first off, I'm going to have, um, let's see, if I, had to, if I had to call that, I'd say that's probably my, my angle. Now, here is what here's my incident incident angle and what do i know about the refracted angle refracted angle i'm going from a less dense to more dense which means the light is slowing down what does that tell me that means that my angle of so here's my here's here's here, here it is hits there that means my angle of refraction actually has to be what smaller smaller yeah. Okay, well, I'll try to do that. That looks that looks smaller. That looks smaller. And then it's going to come and it's going to hit this edge. Okay, all right. Well, let's keep let's keep going. Now, this is a little more of an angle. Okay. So, maybe I didn't draw that perfectly, but now I'm going to have it again where it's going to be a little bit bigger. Whoops. Here, I'll draw it with a line. So here's my incident angle here. Let's just let's just write those all in. I got my incident angle here. This is my incident angle. I should point out right there. That's my refracted angle for the first one. But now I'm going from glass, going from glass to air. So my angle will have to be bigger. Now <clears throat> you might be tempted to say, okay, I'm going to draw something like that. Um, now that could be right, but it's it's probably not. Your, your angles are going to be different from each other, but not by an extreme amount. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, it's going to be bigger, but probably, you know, this would probably be bigger, uh, something like that. So already I can say, well, wait a minute. Um, this thing's going down a bit, down a bit. Hmm. Noticing that this lens is symmetrical, I also know that this whole thing is going to do the same thing at the same point below. Which means this guy, when he comes in, is going to bend a little. Bend a little. Now, if I was to <clears throat> draw this correctly, in a quiz, I would need to show that. Well, wait a minute. Um, that's because this is happening. This angle here um, has to be bigger than this angle, and then I'd have to say, okay, but also uh, this angle is smaller than this angle, and then I would show that this. Uh, light ray bent, got bent and focused down. So now what I got is I've got a light ray going this way, a light ray going this way, don't forget that one, and a light ray going this way. So unfortunately, I don't have um, I don't have enough space because what I would have to do is I'd have to draw 
where all these light rays meet. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? So I know this light ray is going to go like this. I know this light ray is going to go like, okay, I didn't draw it very good, did I? Ugh, I drew it a little badly. So let me see. Maybe one of these I drew a little bit. I think I drew this one a little bad. I think it was more like that. So you're probably going to want, since this was a sketch, you probably want to draw it where you make it work for you. Uh, make it work. And then this light ray is going to come along. And then I can say, oh, well, there we go. Uh, I can tell you exactly where the image is going to show up. The image is going to show up right where all these lines are focusing. In fact, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. In fact, this actually should be the focus. That should be the focus. And that's really all you're trying to do is show where the lines are uh, meeting each other. Now, if I did this, um, let's say I did this uh, in the opposite way. Okay, so let's see. Can I can I do this? Let's see. Um, what if this was turned around? You would do the same thing. You would do the exact same thing. Uh, you're going to get a different result. You you would probably have gotten. Uh, let me see if I can draw this fast. You're going to get a, a lens that looks like uh, this probably. Oy, I'm not drawing it very well. You're still getting your parallel lines going like this, all right? And so you have this happening, you have this happening. Let's just draw a few. But now what's going to happen? Well, um, you go through with your normal line, just like you did before, saying, okay, here, this is like this. Um, this angle here must be smaller, smaller. And then you'd say, okay, but now in this case, with this normal line, this normal line, this refracted angle must be bigger. Okay. And so there, there's bigger. But if you don't, oops, draw this with red. If you notice, it's not, my light is not bending in now. It's bending outwards. It's like, so I should get the same thing on the other side. I'm going to get the same thing where this is going to go out as well. So, I'm sorry, I didn't draw these very well. So what do you do in this case? Well, well, you just have to think about it for a moment and realize your image from, if I have a bunch of parallel lines, my image is going to show up where all these lines converge, where they meet. These are not going to meet, but if I take them backwards, take this guy back. Then I've found where the image is going to show up. The image will not show up on the other side. It'll show up on the same side as the object. Uh, what we call a virtual, virtual object. Virtual image, sorry. Virtual image. Remember, lenses are different than mirrors. If it's on the same side as the object, then it is a virtual image. So it, you can do it in both ways. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and you should probably try this with a different kind of lens just to see if you have any trouble at all. Can you do this? So uh, I hope that solves the problem for you guys. And uh, take a look at them. Make sure you go through everything. Remember, this test is on everything to do with waves. So uh, you want to make sure you cover all your notes. Uh, be ready for that. Okay. See you later.